In this video, we're going to take a first look at the beta release of the component feature in Bricks Builder 1.2. Now, please bear in mind, this is a beta feature at the time of recording this, so don't use this on a live site. No matter how good you may think this is, there are going to be bugs and quirks and inconsistencies that need to be ironed out before it's production ready. So with that warning out of the way, let's take a look. So first of all, what exactly are components and why all the hype about having them in Bricks Builder? Well, components basically have a hybrid approach to working with templates. Traditionally, templates when you're working inside Bricks allows you to have a static version of a design which you can insert into any page, section, template, whatever you want. But it's kind of static. You can make changes, you can add dynamic information in there and those kinds of things. But Technically, the overall thing is static. Whereas with components, we can have instances of components. We can update a component from one central location. and All instances will update. And there's lots of other little things going on as well. So it's better if I demonstrate how this kind of works so you can see it in a real world scenario. So this is what we're going to use for our example. It's a call to action design that I have on one of my websites. And what I'm going to do is we're going to convert this into a component and then go through all the different options we have. So what I'm going to do is you can see I've got my section and then I've got the call to action card. I'm not going to take the section because I want to have more flexibility to insert this wherever I want in my designs. So I'll choose the card. We'll right click, come down to save as component. Once we've done that, we've got the options to name it, to organize it and apply a description. So you'll see it'll pick up whatever name we've applied to the container section, whatever it is we're actually converting into a component. It'll pick that up, whatever you've named it. That's perfectly fine, this example. You can create categories. Now, I've already created one called components, but you can add or search for new ones inside here as well. So we'll just say add this into components and we'll just give this a description. Keep it simple, call to action card and click on create. Now you'll notice something about the interface changes. We now have these purple sections at the top of both the element section and the structure panel on the right hand side. Let's start off by taking a look at what we have on the left hand side. You can see we've got the options for instance, the description, the category for our components and also the component itself. So this is kind of like our organization. So we click to open up the category. You can see this will show us any or all of the categories available. We can drop it down. So when you start to grow your collection, you can easily filter through for what you want from here. Let's close that down. Description is whatever description we've applied to this particular component. You can see there's our call to action card description we've just inserted. Again, if we click to close that down, and then you can go back out of your instance, and we go back to the sort of component level. Now, you'll also notice if we take a look on the structure panel on the right-hand side, now our call to action card has become purple, and we've got the little component symbol. And we can't see all the different elements that make up our call to action card, because this is an instance now of a component. We have to go into the component itself. We want to make changes to the various different aspects. So let's take a look. If we click on this, you'll see we can create properties and it changes now to the instance of the component. So we've got some different options. Again, our description is here, but we can click on the edit component option and this will now switch us into the edit mode. Now you'll notice we still have our call to action card over on the right hand side under our structure panel. But we can now expand this and see all of the different pieces inside the different elements that make it up all those kinds of things. You also notice if we take a look at the left hand side, we've got our typical panels here so we can change any aspects we want of the content, the colors, all those kinds of things. And you'll also notice that we've got global styling options here as well. So we can use this in conjunction in my example with core framework. But if you create your own framework, you can still use all those options inside you and make global changes, to design colors and so on at that level or in your component levels. There's lots of ways and you can use these in combination with each other. One doesn't replace the other. They kind of complement each other in a lot of cases. Now, before we move on, let's have a quick message from today's video sponsor, SEO Press. If you need help with SEO issues on your WordPress site, meet SEO Press Pro's Site Audit, a powerful tool to find and fix SEO problems fast. With over 50 tests across 13 categories, SEO Press helps you tackle issues from headings and keywords to meta descriptions and internal links. Make smarter decisions with Google Search Console integration for insights into clicks and rankings. Scan a thousand URLs in just five minutes with full compatibility for all major page builders and themes. Take control of your SEO with SEO Press Pro's site audit and grow your site's visibility today. Visit seopress.org for more information. Okay, so 
Let's take a little look. We now have the option to edit all of this. But before we do, let's just come back out of this and let's go and add another instance of our component in. So we'll expand this section out. We'll click to make sure our section is selected. We'll come over to our elements components, which is previously was just elements. You see there's all our normal elements, but we've got the components tab and there's any or all of the components that we have. Now, before we take a look at inserting one, we've got a couple of options here I want to quickly run through. You can import, you can export, and you can also delete any of your components. So if you create a load of components, you want to export those, you can export them all of them at one time, or you can come to the component itself and you can simply choose to export only that individual component. You'll also notice you can pin things here, so you can pin like you can with any of the elements that'll stick to the top. So common ones you may be using a lot in a design or the overall website itself, you can pin them. Then ones that you don't use that often can just be left underneath. So it's a nice way of organizing things. If you want to edit this, you can click to edit any of these particular components. So if we click to edit, you'll see that takes us back in like we've seen the structure and we can start making changes. Let's come back out of this, go back into our elements and components. And you can see we've also got the option to get the description information as well. So if we click on that, that'll tell us what description we've applied to this particular component. So all pretty self-explanatory. I don't think there's any rocket science there. So again, let's just expand this out. We'll select. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over and we're going to add in another instance. So we'll just click. And now we have a second instance of the same component. Now let's go make a change. Let's go and change something like, for example, the text. So we'll select any one of the instances over on the structure panel, come over, click to edit component, and now we're into the edited option. And again, like I say, we can expand this out and make changes. So we'll choose this, we'll change this, and we'll put in Academy. So you'll see now both instances have updated. The same thing goes if we change this from join today, and we'll change this to join now. You can see both instances are immediately updated. So this will reflect not only on the page that we're working on, but site-wide. So again, if you're used to working with things like global classes, which is part of what you can do inside Bricks Builder, or you're using something like Core Framework, you'll know how powerful it is when you can make one change in one centralized location, and every page that utilizes that particular setting will update accordingly. This is kind of using the same principle with more of a template kind of setup. So that's pretty cool. Now, that's useful in itself, but it can go a lot further. The last thing you kind of want to do is have a kind of component setup and you have no flexibility other than make it a global site-wide change. You may want to keep the design and the image, but you may want to change the text in certain instances, or you may want to change the image. You just want to use this as kind of like a, a base design idea. Well, let's go and save this to make sure we're all sorted. We'll come back out, we'll go back to our design, and we'll just delete this second one. We don't want that. Okay, so now we want to have a way of making these various different elements inside this component editable, so they become standalone. With our component selected, you'll see that we have properties over on the left-hand side, and we have this message saying, no properties found. What exactly are properties? Well, properties are a way of making various different elements inside the component editable. So your text, your images, those types of things. Let's do that. Let's create our first property. We can choose from currently five different types of properties. You can see text, icons, and so on. Hopefully this will expand into more options later on down the line as this starts to get more and more features. But for now, it's a starting point and we can see the proof of concept, how it's working and so on. So let's say we want to change this little sort of call to action section at the top, this academy. We can say we know it's text, so we're going to click on the text option. We change this name, we'll change it from text, we'll call this category in this example, a description, and then under this, you can see we can apply a default value. So let's just put in something like, so what this is going to do is when we've got Academy, it will replace it with this because it'll become editable. All of this will become clear in a moment. So now we have our first property. Let's click on Create, and absolutely nothing happens. The reason being is because we haven't connected it to the element inside our component. So all we need to do is come over to our structure on the right-hand side, expand this out until we get to the element that we want. In this example, the tagline. We'll select that from the list, and you'll notice now, where we've got the text content, we get these little purple dots, and we've got this little plus as well. This allows us to connect our properties to elements. So let's click on that. What do we want to choose? In this case, it's our category, and that's now being connected. 
So whatever we change, you can see that it pulls in category, which was the sort of placeholder we set up. So that now becomes an editable element. Let's do the same thing again now for something like our heading. So let's come back out of here, go to our properties, click on edit, create, text. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this CTA heading. We'll do the same for the description. And we'll just pop in default like we've seen before. We'll click on create. We'll come over, expand our card out. Now, this is one of the things I wish we had was that this would just stay expanded to whatever we had before it kind of refreshes the page. That would be cool. Okay, so we've got our heading. Let's select that from our list. We'll do the same again. So we'll click now to add this in and connect our property. This is our CTA heading. We'll choose that. You can see that pulls in the placeholder that we had. Let's do one final one, which is our image. So we'll come back out of this, come into edit, We'll choose to create a final one, which in this example is going to be an image. We'll call it right column image, and we'll say we'll select an image. We'll just choose a different image for this example. It'll probably look terrible, but it'll show you how it kind of works. So there's our placeholder. We'll click on create. And like we did before, we just need to connect things up. So we'll select our image. We'll come over, click on the little connection option, choose image from the options from there. And now we have that connected and you see that pulls the image in, so that's now changed it. So now let's just save this. And now we've created the component and we've also connected up various different elements inside there. So now let's come back out of this component. Let's just delete this instance and let's just add a new one in. So we'll come back to our elements and components, click on component, insert our call to action card. You can see that's now pulled in the relevant pieces of information in the placeholders. So now we can select that from our list and we get these options on the left-hand side. So we change category, change that to academy. So you can see that that changes our sort of heading. And if we want to change the image, we'll choose that from our list, add in the original image that we chose, give it a second or two. And there we go, that's inserted it in. Now, just to demonstrate, let's go back to our elements and components, add another instance of that in. And you can see that pulls it in with all the placeholders in place. Now we've got this weird kind of thing where it's pulled this one in, which as we know, this is kind of something weird that happens every now and again with the editor itself. Let's save this. And if we preview, you can see it is actually showing the correct placeholder image there for us. So now we've seen how we can insert these in, change the content and connect everything up. Let's take a look at how we can make a global change to the design aspect of this and how all instances will still reflect that, even though we may have different data in the various different elements on here. Let's just jump back into the editor. We'll select one of our instances. We'll go to edit component. And from here, let's go and change something. So let's just say we'll grab the heading. Let's change, change the color of this. So we'll select the style. We'll come to our typography. We'll change the font weight to something like 100, so it's really skinny. You can see both of those now update. We can say we want to put everything into capitals. Looks terrible, but you can see how it works. And while we're at it, let's come into our button, for example, choose our button, come to our colors, change our background color for this green, and we'll go for this yellowy mustard color. And you can see that's now updated. Save that. Take a look at our test page. And you see those changes have now been reflected immediately, but we still have our custom content for our section, for our title, for our image, and so on. What this hopefully demonstrates, though, is just how flexible these components alongside using a framework or CSS variables and global classes can actually be. It opens up a ton of possibilities. It's much more flexible and powerful than using typical sort of templates that you have and have had for quite some time with Bricks itself. Does it replace things like with dynamic data where you can do a lot of this? Yes and no. There's kind of like pros and cons to both approaches. Uh, and I think I need to experiment a lot more with this to see exactly how I would start to use it inside my projects. But I can already see some use cases where this would be incredibly useful. But as always, I'd love to get your feedback. Is this the components that you were looking for and hoping for? Is there anything missing you think should be added in? Are you excited for this or are you a little bit sort of, eh, it is where it is? Let me have your comments and feedback down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.